dedicated amount coming out of the budget rather than that going into the consolidated fund. It might still go, but we know what has got to be used for agricultural infrastructure. So if these are the kinds of things broadly we've done, equally important is the reform that we're bringing in in the financial sectors. Disinvestment to continue, LIC to have IPO, insurance sector to have more in terms of opening up for 74% 74, 74 for FDI. These are very clearly steps, progressive steps in financial sector. Other than that, one major cry of all the banks have been the NPAs for which we have been repeatedly giving capital infusion. In order that the bank books are cleared and cleaned up, we have come with an announcement of a formulation through which the NPAs will be culled out of the bank's books based on some formulation, not any discretion there. It goes to a holding company like structure, which after doing the necessary you know, sprucing up and also cleaning up and weeding out problems of that uh, particular asset, will be through an open process attract asset reconstruction companies which can come and bid for those assets even at that stage after some haircut obviously banks will get some money back to those NPAs for which they only kept provisioning for the NPA but didn't have the wherewithal to dispose them off legitimately so we are giving that comfort to the banks and also for funding the infrastructural requirements, a development finance institution is being brought in. All lessons learned from the IDBI, which started as a DFI but later went on to become a scheduled commercial bank like functioning and couldn't succeed at that, are taken on board. So this DFI, even as it comes with about a 20,000 crore given by the government, which with a little more every now and then added, will eventually be used for raising about 5 lakh crores in a matter of next 3, 4, 5 years is a formulation where when the law gets passed on that, we will still have an opportunity for the private sector also to set up their own development finance institution. So this country is not going to be, the needs of this country are such that just one development financial institution which is set up by the government will be adequately meeting up with the requ uh, demand requirements, no, and therefore we see a future for a DFI which is partly funded by the government and raises capital from the market is also competing with private sector DFIs. Uh, largely this much, but very quickly I'll move over to talking about how we have not, the, uh, we have not lost the opportunity to clean up government's own books. I had started it in July 2019-20, continued it in February 20, and even now we have made accounts more transparent. Nothing is pushed under the carpet. You're showing clearly where is the money going. Money given to FCI is also brought on board. So accounting of government expenditure and revenue statements are all now lots more transparent and open and uh, absolutely upfront stated the fiscal deficit where everybody was advising and rightly because everyone had concern that the economy should revive advising us please spend more we not only ensured that the capital expenditure of the government was repeatedly reviewed and spending was encouraged and pushed we ensured that the spending will not get delayed and that is why even though we announced one capital expenditure amount during the BE, even that has gone up that in the RE I had to make additional provisions for it. With that in mind, we have also increased the spending in the forthcoming year. As a result, borrowing increased. Our fiscal deficit, which started at 3.5 during February 2020, has gone to 9.5% of the GDP. So we have spent, we have spent, and we have spent. Otherwise, your fiscal deficit wouldn't have reached this money, this uh, number. 
but does that mean that we are going to show it and forget